This episode was sponsored by Paperlike. Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode. And this one is the finale, or the last episode of the series of my back to school guides. This one focuses all around the backpack or the tech, I guess, what's inside of it. Whether you are heading back to school, you're back on campus, or the longest distance you're traveling is from, say, your bed, to your desk because you're all learning from home. You will need some pretty useful tech ideas, but in one of my previous back to school episodes, you guys absolutely tore me a new one. You roasted me because all the items were not budget. Students couldn't afford them. So I will try my very best this time. I can't promise anything, but most of these are kind of keeping with that in mind. And with that being said, the first item is a pack, and many of you think it's supreme, it must be a lot of money, but I actually ordered this for $10 on Wish. It took 60 days, it took forever, it's a pretty convincing knockoff. I'm not much of a hype beast to know what a real one feels like. You can't get any more budget than getting a knockoff item. You'll probably be the only one that knows it's a fake. It holds books, it holds laptops, it's a backpack. It's honestly probably made in the same factory or the same conveyor belt as the real one. And just remember that if you do order off of Wish or one of those weird Asian websites, it takes forever for it to ship. I will put that off to the side. We'll load all of the tech into there. You guys can't complain now though. It's as budget as you can get. And to the first main device, and I'm contradicting myself already, I know, the most expensive tablet that you can grab. It's the iPad Pro. But a lot of you have asked, as students, can you get by solely using an iPad? And my initial answer is probably not. And when I was in university slash college, there were specific courses that required a dedicated operating system, so I couldn't get by on, say, an iPad. A lot of you recommended a Chromebook. That wouldn't have worked either. But if your course load does allow it or you're stubborn as hell, probably the best device to grab is an iPad. You've got the biggest versatility of the App Store. iPad OS is getting better. You can manage files now, actually. And if you are someone that uses an iPad on a day-to-day -day basis, I know some content creators kind of swear by them. This is where today's sponsor kind of comes in. It's paper-like. It's a screen protector for your iPad that makes it feel like you're writing on paper. And even though I've been super careful with my own iPad, I still have a couple scratches just from using the Apple Pencil, just from putting this into a backpack. And I wish I did protect the screen a bit sooner. So if you do jot down a ton of notes or if you're an artist, love to use the iPad for drawing, stick a paper like on it. The writing experience almost makes it feel like you're jotting down on a notebook, which most of you guys know I'm a huge, huge fan of that. And if you are being super stubborn and insist on using your iPad as your only device, I'm probably gonna recommend a case slash keyboard combo for it because you can already forward an iPad. I'm gonna assume you're a baller. I'm also gonna recommend the most expensive, which is the Magic Keyboard. It feels like it's made for the iPad. It kind of slots into place. You have the benefits of the Magic Keyboard. No butterfly switches, so nothing will get stuck. And you have the bonus of using the trackpad. This here is probably the best non-dedicated OS combo that you can rock. Yes, expensive, I get it, and that's why we're going on to the next item, a bit more budget conscious. And you can see here, it is from Microsoft, and it's not this exact device. This is the Surface 3, I know, a pricey laptop. It's actually the Microsoft Go 2. And I reviewed that device earlier in the year, but I actually gave it away to one of you guys as a giveaway. So hopefully you're using it to good effect. But I think the go-to is the perfect build. It has a dedicated operating system, Windows. It's got a great small form factor and it comes in at around 500 bucks. So it checks off all of the student boxes. And like I mentioned, really consider what you're taking in school. If you can get by just by typing essays, yeah, a Chromebook would be great. But if you need to install software on a dedicated operating system, definitely the go-to would be my choice for most students out there. For whichever laptop or main device that you end up picking, grab an external hard drive because I know as a student, you don't have the luxury of upping the internal storage on your main device. SSD sizes are usually the first options that get axed when you're trying to keep things on budget. You can double or even triple the storage space for maybe a third of the price with a hard drive like this. Now, it's small and compact. It easily fits into a pack, even your pocket. You can share all of your files with your friends and it's via USB-C, which all of the devices we've kind of discussed use and it's super quick and all you need is the one cable. Can't believe hard drives are this tiny. 
On to smartphone devices, and I think these need no introduction. First and foremost, the Google Pixel 4a. Hands down, the best budget phone, maybe even one of the best smartphones in the year. $350, you cannot come close to that in terms of price. You get a full edge-to-edge -edge display, it fits perfectly into one hand, you get stock Android, you get an awesome camera experience, and even the cheapest phone from another manufacturer comes in around $500, so that's $100 and $50 more than the 4A. And I cannot praise this phone enough. I think Google has found the ultimate sweet spot on where to build their smartphones, especially when you compare that to devices that cost a thousand. 1500 maybe even close to $2,000. I'm looking at you, Samsung, even though you're on the second list with your A51. Your smartphones are generally expensive and the A51, even as a mid-tier phone, is still pricier than the 4A. But I find that it bogs or lags down a bit and I think that's the real benefit or selling factor of stock Android. You'll get the purest Android experience, so definitely leaning over to the 4A for my recommendation on budget smartphones. Switching on over to head phone choices. I think you guys knew that there's only one option on the budget end. Check out the OnePlus Buds. They come in at $80 and when you compare that to AirPods. Google Pixel Buds or anything in the wireless headphone market. I know that you can get those 10 to $20 knockoffs, but they sound absolute trash. The OnePlus Buds sound pretty decent. I would put them on the level as say AirPod 2s. They don't have active noise cancelling. Maybe they don't look as sleek, but I've had a ton of friends that have ordered the OnePlus Buds. They've loved them. And you're not dropping $200, $250 on a pair of wireless headphones that you potentially might lose. I know that these can easily be misplaced. And another small audio device that you could potentially keep in your pack, this is the LG PK2. It's the smallest Bluetooth speaker that LG currently offers, but it packs a solid punch of sound. Definitely surprising how much bass comes out of this little guy. It's got the radiators or passive radiators on the outside. Small enough to carry around in one hand and once again, easily fits into any sort of pack. And the next item, I remember when I was in school, not all TVs we had, whether it was in dorm rooms, people's places, they were not smart TVs. I think the case is still the same. Most students inherit their TVs from say their parents or as hand-me-downs. And I know how much we all watch YouTube, Netflix, Twitch. Turn your non-smart TV smart with a simple stick. This is the Mi Stick and I think it costs $20, so it's really on the budget end. It comes with its own dedicated remote and it's a valuable piece of tech for you students out there. You never know when you might be that dorm room hero turning that non-smart TV smart. And to kind of wrap things off and show as an example how much this pack can actually hold, I'm gonna use this as a dedicated textbook. Or if you are a hype beast or a wannabe, you got the fake Supreme pack, you can dream of all the other sweet kicks that you could get. This is the collab sneaker book. It's got the sneakerheads galore of shoes that have come out over the past couple decades. So you can ogle at all your Jordans, off-whites, whatever it may be, but this should fit. And the last piece that I kind of carried around, it's gonna be included in this tech pack, is a pair of shades. I always wore sunglasses when I was on campus. A lot of you have asked what shades that I rock, mostly in my Instagram photos. These are the Serengeti Leandros. I'll leave the exact model below. I know that they're not the cheapest. I tend to rock Oakley Frog Skins as well. Those are more on the budget side. Or you could get the $10 knockoffs off of eBay. I don't think anyone would judge you for that. But that was all of the tech in my pack. And you can see it all comfortably fit into this fake $10 Supreme pack. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know if I was budget enough. I really tried my best. But just honestly hope you're all staying healthy and safe, whatever you're studying. So all the best to you. Hope you guys enjoyed my entire back to school lineup of videos. And I'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones, which you might see a sneak peek behind you. That is a new massive triple monitor setup. No more spoilers. We'll catch you then. Peace.